Hello, the federal government led by Justin Trudeau had created a great amount of uh, program to help Canadians during the COVID-19 crisis. We might agree with them, we might disagree with them. Everybody is entitled to their political opinion. That's not the point here. Um, when we look at data, it seems that the uh, CERB, the, I want to get it correctly, the, um, sorry, the Canadian Emergency Response Benefit Program seems to be the one that has been used the most. Uh, when I, the latest number I found is 8.4 million Canadian ask for it and it costs uh, 43.5 million dollars yes there's been uh, some fraud and there's been some kerfuffle when it comes to uh, you know administration and, and all of this and that should be investigated and those who have made mistake or false claim should be punished yet this um, action brought back the debate about uh, a minimum guaranteed income, I would say, for Canadian. And I know it's uh, a subject that creates a lot of debate. Some would say that it does not encourage people to go and find a job. They will stay at home and do nothing. Well, those who have lost their job and were forced at home for several weeks if not months would probably tell us that is not pleasurable and it's not something fun um, but when we think about this concept we need to think in terms people who say well it costs a lot of money it's expensive it's not cheap yes but we need to ask ourselves um, what is the cost of poverty when you have to choose between having a roof over your head or eat, feed your family, when you don't have the means to pay for your prescription medication or something that is sold over the counter, what happened? Well, people tend to be a little more sick. They will go more often to the doctor. Uh, they may end up in hospital more. Or they make bad choice, commit crime like stealing uh, food, or and end up in the criminal system, might end up in jail. And I can say, without doing an extensive uh, analysis, that someone in hospital or in prison costs way much more than a check that we can send. But the check is now. The consequences is later. If I can draw a parallel, that is not perfect, but I think you can understand what I'm trying to say is when it comes to tobacco, you know, we were saying, you know, it's individual choice and we will uh, take care of people who end up sick because they have smoked all their life. And then people start to say, well, if we invest in prevention, like massively, one, we will have citizens that are healthier, but it's way much cheaper to pay for patches and program and advertisement and name it than taking care of those who are sick 20 years later. So it's, it's a good investment, if nothing else, from a business point of view, I would say. And... But some, some would still say, you know, if they're poor, they just have to work harder, get a better job, you know, do something. And it's for this reason, this kind of discourse that we tend to value more uh, and pay more doctors, lawyers, and, and so on than someone work at the grocery store, someone working at the senior home. Uh, even if we discover in the last few weeks that, man, we really need those people working, uh, you know, uh, 
minimum wage in grocery store and Alpinger seniors. They, w they were essential. All that I'm saying is I don't have the perfect solution to solve the problem of poverty in Canada and around the world. I'm just saying that we need to have a serious cons conversation about it that is not limited to neoliberal uh, theories. We need to ask what is the worth of a human being? Are all lives equally important, who have the same value? What is the importance of the welfare of everyone, those we love and also those we might not love? And as believers, Christian disciples of Jesus the Christ, these are the kind of questions that as to move us, because Jesus did not play favorite. When it was time to recruit disciples, he did not went to the top of the society, to, to those who were wealthy, those who were... He went across those division. Jesus is, is presented as someone who crossed those barriers of gender, of class, of all those barriers that divide us. Jesus come to teach us that God's love is for all. In God's eye, everyone is important. Jesus has this capacity to see through people and find true goodness of someone's heart, regardless of the status or condition. I'm not saying that this COVID-19 crisis is a good thing. It's not. Too many people died, too many people were sick, lost their job, their lives been thrown upside down. No, nothing good about that. I'm saying since we're stuck with it, uh, let us have a serious conversation in which kind of world we want to live when this will be over. And we all can play a part in it with our friends, with our family, in our communities. We have this power to have this conversation and reflect and try to see where we're called to go, what kind of world we're called to build. Thank you once again for watching. Take care of yourself and bye-bye.